The fury of those protesting Governor Scott Walker's actions in Wisconsin was fired up additionally last week by a prank blogger who called and got Governor Walker on the line. He thought he was talking to funder David Koch. What was in that call has raised eyebrows and talk of possible criminal investigation. I sat down with former Attorney General of the state of Wisconsin, Peg Lautenschlager, to talk about what was on those tapes. You know, uh, the call is a prank call. Ironically, it's what's called a one-party consent tape, where one of the people on the line knew that it was being recorded, uh, something which, frankly, um, you know, liberals and progressives have opposed in many years before this, but one which um, uh, conservatives had always wanted. And so it's, that part of it, I think, is interesting. Uh, but I also think it's interesting because, well, you know, there's nothing there where you have a smoking gun or something that you can take into a courtroom. There are some concerns. Uh, first and foremost, as somebody who represents uh, working people who are public employees here, is the notion that we are still operating under a contract. We are still operating under current state law. And the governor has clearly uh, indicated in that conversation his unwillingness to meet with the union to sit at a bargaining table to try to work things out. Secondly is the concern that um, uh, within this phone call he uh, insinuated that it might be useful for Mr. Koch to come in with his brother and do some independent uh, campaign expense type you know, ex uh, expenditures uh, on behalf of those legislators taking a tough vote uh, on behalf of the governor who might face recall or election concerns. Um, this clearly is a problem in terms of collusion between uh, individuals who are doing independent expenditures and official campaigns. Um, I, I don't think, you know, he doesn't talk about it in great detail, but certainly I would think there would be enough there that at least a, a group like the Government Accountability Board should go through campaign contributions. Uh, keep this in mind. And question whether or not down the road or previously um, there may have been some collusion, inappropriate collusion there. And thirdly and most importantly as a, as a former prosecutor, I find the remarks regarding the um, the possibility of using provocateurs in the crowd events uh, as being very troubling uh, for an incumbent governor to acknowledge uh, even a passing thought that um, inciting violence was perhaps a possible or even appropriate response um, to the peaceful demonstrations that have been had these last 10 days uh, is, I think, most disconcerting. And perhaps what's, um, uh, you know, kind of the frosting on the cake on that is not that he dismissed this possibility because it would be uh, unlawful, immoral, or anything like that, but rather that he dismissed the possibility because it might backfire politically. And, um, and to think that somebody who uh, is theoretically at least, or institutionally at least, the most powerful governor in the United States when it comes to what the legislature has given him, is thinking in terms of uh, violence as a possibility uh, is very troubling indeed. You are going to be making some filings as soon as tomorrow. What's the nature of those? Uh, well, I can't quite say out loud, but let's just say I do represent the State Employees Union and the governor's um, uh, unwillingness to meet at the bargaining table, the governor's unwillingness to comply with the laws which currently exist in the state of Wisconsin um, have been uh, a matter of concern for our union as well as many others that uh, represent public employees throughout the state. If you were still the attorney general in the state, what would you be doing? Well, you know, we don't have a very powerful attorney general, uh, but on the other hand, I do think that those statements um, uh, that are made um, probably come under the Government Accountability Board more than the State Attorney General, but the statements that were being made regarding um, the financing of elections and financing of outside contribution or outside expenditures on behalf of individual legislators is something that at least deserves a review of what campaign uh, contributions have been made, what expenditures have been made and by which groups, and uh, probably a continuing monitoring of, of that sort of thing uh, as we move forward in this election process. And finally, the governor on that same phone call did talk about being in communication with other governors from other states. Mm -hmm. Your suggestions, perhaps, to people in those states and investigators in those states 
in terms of what this reveals about the need for scrutiny of those outside expenditure groups? Yeah, I, I, as you know uh, full well, um, the Citizens United decision has really done a lot to eviscerate um, uh, concerns regarding election spending in this country um, and has given um, many people um, of means a pretty much an open wallet when it comes to financing campaigns. But the one thing where the decision was very clear and where uh, it did provide an opening for those concerned with fair and, uh, clean and fair elections is in the area of public knowledge of the kinds of campaign contributions that are being made. And I think it's it's imperative that those who are concerned about open and clean elections um, be vigilant when it comes to monitoring contributions, monitoring expenditures, and doing as much as they can uh, to ascertain uh, from where contributions are coming and to where expenditures are being made.